let's talk a little bit about Collins, because with the announcement of Lars Sullivan, assumably he is going to Raw, which is, seems you, kind of like think? the land of the big Why man. do you think Raw? Yeah. I, I just feel like he would go to Raw for that purpose of it's kind of like the the land of the big But man. they've already gotten their monster in Braun. Right, but they don't have to bill him as a giant big boy monster. They can build him as a strong mother. They don't ever have to say this giant freak. They could say this strong freak. His... Okay, there you go. I was going to say, his... you... saying freak, his finisher's the freak accident. Well, yeah, I know, I know that, but they don't. They, they can bill no, him no, no, as I get you. I get you. strong, not big. You know what I mean? Right. Guys like Lashley's build is strong, not big. The, the, you know, and I feel like when it comes to potential feuds looking at smackdown other than Big E, i feel like everything would be a stupid squash which yes squashes mm-hmm. are good to build up the the strength of a character but at the same time when it comes to lars you're really gonna need someone that can fucking carry him through a match because he's still relatively green true his house at the san jose show uh over the weekend was just okay it was just okay. The match with Keith Lee? Yes, it was gotcha. just okay. It was good for what it was. It was quick. It was kind of exciting. Spoiler alert, Lars won. But I feel like if it wasn't against Keith Lee, like if it was against a job or it was against someone that doesn't have a lot of experience that could carry a match, Lars would have suffered heavily. And I mean, he's right. going to suffer on that main roster. Because uh, I feel like another reason he's going to suffer on the main roster is not a lot of people want him on the main roster. They wanted some other people. I, I believe wrongfully so. A lot of people want to dream uh, undisputed when they're just well, they're the, doing so perfect down there right. that they still have stuff to do. Lars is running out of shit to do Very in true. NXT. And, and I know I'm talking a lot here. And Tim, fine, I'll let you fine. take this here in a second. But, uh, you know. The, I, I got to feel these call-ups are based off what can we have them do? Nothing. Just go up. Shayna Baszler, I love her to death. I think she's the best. Her wrestling style is fun. She's getting a lot better on the microphone. She's just the kind of bully that I was scared of in high school. Middle school, I'm scared of now. If they walk into my store, I'd probably cry. But regardless, people like that, once you're done with like your marquee feud, you can have two or three more. I want you to think about the feud all of Finn Balor's feuds, notice how they didn't really last that long except for the Samoa Joe one. And after the Samoa Joe one, <laughs> main roster, right. go. You run out of things to do in NXT really quickly because of the amount of people there. And I would like to see at some point NXT become a place that you can have be a third brand, not be the place to go when you first are starting out or when you want to build up this big indie darling into your guy. It needs to establish itself as that full and frontal third brand, but you can't do that if you continue to think we're bringing this guy to NXT so eventually we can call him up. Tim, go right. ahead. And Triple H did mention that last week in the the uh, NXT conference call before TakeOver. He was like, you know, eventually we want NXT to be considered an equal of Raw and SmackDown, basically. We want guys that are not going to be there just, okay, this is my stepping stone to the main roster. He want, he says that eventually he wants guys that goes to NXT they go to NXT and be like, I can be the main guy in NXT. I can be the main guy here for a while. I don't have to go to Raw and SmackDown to feel successful. I can be successful right here doing what we're doing already. And now when you look at who else could be coming up, another name that is being floated around is EC three. EC three Real quick, I want to. Yeah. I want to harp. I want to harp back to what you just said. Of, okay. I I want to make this. I want to make NXT a, a a a place. You know who's doing that? Hmm. You know who? Oh no, it's Ono. Right. Ono can face every single new guy. He can get his ass kicked. He can kick their ass. He can be the NXT guy. He everyone will get their main roster moment. That quote unquote main roster moment when they go to the Rumble. Right. They can do something cool at the Rumble or a Battle Royal WrestleMania. They'll get their quote main roster moment. Mm-hmm. But for the time being, I think until Ono decides, hey, it's time for me to hang up the boots. Keep that guy in NXT. I think he's great. He's a perfect fit for it. Tim, go ahead and continue. Well. The Ono role is exactly what Ty Dillinger was supposed to be. Never go to the main roster. Just be the guy that, hey, he knows what we want. He knows what we want out of the guys here before they go to the main roster. And he got himself over with that 10 stuff. But as far as who else could be coming up other than Lars, EC3's name is being floated around. EC3's name was floated around right after SummerSlam as well. But if you remember, I think who would he face at SummerSlam? Velveteen Dream? 
EC3? Yeah. Was that SummerSlam? Well, the the the, match, the night before SummerSlam, Takeover Brooklyn. No, I'm saying yeah. Was that the, yeah? Yeah, it was Takeover Brooklyn. Sorry. Yeah. He, um. I yeah. His dream. He, he suffered dream? a concussion, and that's what halted them from. Basically, his name was on the short list. Come up to the main roster soon. He suffered a concussion at Takeover in Brooklyn. His name was off the short list, but apparently, we're hearing that his name's back on the short list to possibly come up soon. So EC3, somebody that has already. Basically, almost gone through the entire developmental system the first time as Derek Bateman. Then he went to TNA Impact and basically made himself one of the top guys there. Came back super over in NXT. Why not call him up now? What and more can EC3 do other than feud for the for the NXT title or the North American title? So what what I want to what I want to ask you real quick. Um... You, you said EC3. That might be your pick for this question. Who would you like to see be called up? Who do you think would either be a good fit or just like, hey, I would really like to see this guy in the main roster? I think Adam Cole for the fact that he would change the stigma of the main roster that a guy under 205 needs to be on 205 Live. Uh, kind of like what Finn. they were going to do with Finn where Finn wasn't going to go to the Cruiserweight division. He was going to be the damn Universal Champion. But then he got hurt and Vince lost all faith in him. I think Adam Cole could be that guy that Finn was supposed to be. Maybe not give him the universal title right away or even put him in, in the universal title picture for a while. But be that guy to where, oh yeah, he's small. But he doesn't have to be in the Cruiserweight division. He could be a success just on Raw or just on SmackDown. Man, I don't know. I feel like a guy like Adam Cole... I feel like he thrives off the, the, the and, and this is not a knock to him whatsoever. I feel like he thrives off that smaller niche crowd of, hey, I know Adam Cole. I watched him in the independence. I love doing the Adam Cole, baby, horse shit. I think on the main roster, after a while, it'd just be like, oh, fuck, cool, Adam Cole, bleh. But here's the thing. You're saying, oh, he, he works better with the smaller crowds. You've never seen him in front of a bigger crowd. Biggest crowd he's worked is uh, Wrestle Kingdom. Mm -hmm. You know, other than that, he, he was working PWG and Ring of Honor. Wait, and, and uh, okay, and you say he worked PWG and Ring of Honor, and I know that it's like it, it has to be one of those testing grounds of hey, we gotta test you out on the main roster, and I don't want that test to be the first couple weeks. Hell yeah, Adam Cole, and then after a while, it'll be Adam who? But see, that's what a lot of people thought was going to happen with. With um, Kevin Owens, he was coming up strong as Diff the former. Completely different argument. Completely different H argument. How though? He came completely. up strong as the former NXT champion. Well, when he first came out, he was still NXT champion. And you know why people got over on KO so quickly, and this will never happen with Adam Cole. Why? Because he beat Cena in his first goddamn match. Okay, so maybe have Adam Cole come in and beat somebody big. Make him. I don't know. I think they had so much. I, I don't think it was as much as the fans was were riding on Owens. It was people backstage were riding on Owens because they thought this dude has it. I genuinely don't think that, other than Triple H back there, that anyone thinks that Adam Cole can bring it to the main roster. I love Adam Cole. I think he's charismatic as hell. Mm -hmm. And that charismatic person could be all right on Raw and SmackDown, but I don't think that they have enough faith in him for him to fully let him express himself in that creative way. I think guys like Dunn, guys like Road Dog. They're going to really, really halt him from what he completely has. They're going to halt his full potential. For God's sake, they, I feel like they did that with Styles for a while. So, when Styles was first rising up, they really halted him until he was like, hey, I'm like fucking 43 years old. I've been doing this for the last 20 years. I know what I'm doing. I think Cole is going to have that same issue of someone backstage is going to go, I don't think he has it, Chief. And they're going to go, all right, he doesn't have it. Fuck him. So here's my question then. Do you and think give me your question. Adam Cole would be better coming to the main roster as Adam Cole or Adam Cole in the Undisputed Era? You know, I'm going to say the uh, Adam Cole in the Undisputed Era. I want to say the Undisputed Era as a whole all because four that, or no that would strong. shake things up. Uh, yeah, all four. All gotcha. four. Definitely. Because I feel like that would definitely shake things up because you've got four legitimate potential single singles guys that are in a faction – 
that is not only another faction to add to your show, but that's another tag team to add to your show. Imagine the matches that can happen with either the Revival, the New Day, the Bar, the Usos. Those are already right there money matches that you can print the money on paper now because it's going to happen. Oh, yeah. I feel like they would succeed more as... And that's a way you can get Adam Cole over and O'Reilly and Fish and Strong all as 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 individual people and a tag team if you bring them up where they're all super comfortable with each other. They've got that charisma of just a four frat dudes that drink natty ice all day and sit by the pool. Uh, do you remember that picture of them all sitting by the pool holding the titles like they were sunbathing with them? Yes, do you sir. remember that picture? Yes, sir. That's charisma right there. They could bring that to the main roster. Dude, they'd be fucking billionaires. If they brought him up alone, it would be a matter of like, oh my god, this dude's floundering. The tag team division needs help regardless. Yes. And I think bringing up a tag team right now is probably your best bet. And NXT, while they have Otis and... Uh, what is it? Otis and... The, Heavy Machinery. That's their name. There you go. Heavy Machinery, who I love to death. They have the Street Profits. They have uh, the... I keep wanting to call them TM61. They have the Mighty. And they have, you know, eh, tag teams. The Undisputed Era, if and when they get called up, need to be that call-up that's a, we are a fucking force to be reckoned with. They need to be called up in a very similar way to the Revival, but they need to be treated a little bit better than the Revival, provided that, you know, the Revival did get hurt. Yes, I know that. Mm -hmm. So, that, that I'm, I, I don't mean to go so fucking hard right oh, you're now. good. <laughs> I mean, people like to hear you rant and rave. They get tired of my voice all week long. Yeah, they get tired of you. Um, uh, Sean Cook in chat okay. says a name that I feel like gets brought up, brought up constantly. Alistair Black needs to be on main. Honestly, I don't think it's going to happen until after Mania. Hear me yeah, out. Yeah, I agree, and I'm totally <clears throat> fine with that. I think, here's what you do. Alistair Black never got his rematch against Ciampa with the championship. Alistair Black just defeated Gargano. So Black can come on NXT when they do those next TV tapings a week from today. I think it's next. Yes, next week. And be like, all right, Ciampa, I beat Gargano. I ran through the, the test you guys put in front of me at TakeOver Los Angeles War Games. Now I want you. I want my title back. And then we can go to Royal Rumble weekend. Black, Ciampa, NXT title on the line. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I see it happening. The reason I also don't want to see Black up right now is I think he's doing really, really, really good work in NXT. Yeah. That he, he that if he was down there for two years, three years, even maybe, maybe four, it'd be fine. You wouldn't get bored of him. Because I feel like thing two, two and a half years. Yeah, the, 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 the Finn route. I yeah. don't know. I think Alistair Black has it has literally everything you could want from a guy on your show. Black Whether he's on NXT, SmackDown, or Raw, he carries that same vibe as almost Bray Wyatt carries, and he carries a very yeah confident, very I I know my strengths. I'm going to play to my strengths, and I'm not even going to mention my weaknesses. I think Black on the main roster in a few years would be good. I think right now, again, would just be, I think right now with the main roster, you need to establish the guys you have on. You need like guys like Lashley are finally getting established. How long ago did Lashley commit? A couple months. Uh, right after WrestleMania. It was like the week of mania. There you go. Lashley is now being solidified as, Oh, that's right. That's what we're doing with Lashley. Mm -hmm. There are still like, people that they, they don't know what they're doing. They tried to push him as a top guy when he feuded with Roman over the number one contendership. Mm -hmm. And it mm -hmm. kind of worked. But as soon as he was done with that, it was just like, now what? Because just look at SmackDown with Sanity and Asuka. The fuck who? are they doing with them? So I, I, I know. Sanity like, who? Hey, yeah, exactly. People are like, hey, you know, call these people up, uh, uh, you know, make, make it fresh. It would be fresh if we start getting some fucking stories and some development and something with the people that have been floundering on the main roster yeah. since their fucking call up. Now, here's my worry going back to EC3. Go ahead. He's, he's, he's beloved for about two or three weeks, and then they go, what do we do with him? This is just another Bobby Roode. Uh, he's a big, athletic, muscular guy. They'll find something to do. <laughs> it's but. the truth. There's always stuff to do for guys that look hot. There's always something to do. Yeah. But with people like, you know, 
uh, uh, you know, the people that are already up there, Oscar, Andrade, uh, Sanity. With those people, if you don't already have a plan for them, the thought of bringing up somebody, crazy. To think, like, we'll just build the. I mean, God, for God's sakes, Oscar's run in NXT yeah. was just, oh, it was just so good. She comes to the main roster and she was killing it for a bit, dude. I, you know, the decision yeah. that they went with at WrestleMania was the decision they decided to go with. That's none of my complaint. It's none of my, you know, I'm not going to down it. I'm not going to up it. It's whatever it happened and it's over with. It happened in April. It's November now. But regardless, it, 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 if you don't have clear places to go with these people, why are you trying to bring in more? Is it to so we can forget about those people? Because that's what I feel like the plan is. You know what I mean? I think one reason could be it's just like, well, we've got X amount of guys in NXT. We have X amount of guys we want to add to the NXT television show, but there's so many guys already, we've got to move some people out to bring new guys into NXT, on the NXT show, you know? Yeah, I, I, I know, I know. A lot of people are saying uh, Cian Alma should be a top guy. Uh, I think he should just be someone that gets noticed, for God's sakes. I mean, but he's I don't know not. about top guy yet, but have him feud with freaking knock him over the U.S. title or something. Or... Yeah. Here, here, here's a great idea. Have Ray beat Nakamura for the U.S. title. Nakamura Andrade feud over the title. Babyface heel right there. You know, I don't think uh, you know. Cian and Elmas being a top guy, I feel like on SmackDown, as long as you can wrestle fairly well, you're going to be a top guy. Uh, people seem wrestling fans have biases. Mm -hmm. People love NXT because it's known as the greatest show. People don't like Raw because they think Vince McMahon runs a Raw. It's bad. People like SmackDown because they think, oh, guys like AJ and, 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 and Brian are on SmackDown. That means it's the greatest show ever. While the biases have fair arguments to be made, I think having biases when it comes to wrestling is completely stupid. Regardless, um, you take that bias that SmackDown is the whole greatest place on earth mm -hmm. as long as you can wrestle fairly well you're probably gonna get over with the fans here's the thing especially if, especially if you're almas if guys like orton in the in, he's literally been on the main roster for almost as long as i have been alive <laughs> yeah. guys like seriously with guys like that the fact that he's so over on smackdown and all he has to do is show up a couple times a month and try to rip someone's mask or break someone's fingers or something like that it's great. I'm not going to doubt that we're I'm sure we're going to get an Almas Randy feud and I think it'll be great because I yeah. think Randy can play a great heel. Almas can be a great like underdog type guy. I think it's going to be great. Smackdown has the opportunity to build people and I don't know why they're not doing that with Sanity or Oscar right now. But, I get that the New Day and the Usos are high priority for like, hey, social media, look, it's the New Day. They're doing something funny. They're dressed as pilgrims, and it says six and one, New Day, New Day, New Day. And the Usos, they're twins. They're good. They're great. They're flying. It's Roman. It's Roman. Roman, cousin, fucking Usos. But then you stifle all of these other guys. And I think that's just horseshit, personally. Thank you, Chris, and we can for the $2. How can the Miz be a babyface? Easy as acting like a babyface. Easy. As long as he's Have you fun. seen Miz and Mrs.? He's the biggest babyface in the world on that show. I And am everybody loves him on Miz and Mrs. I am running out of Soleil Live cotton mouth. Go ahead. No. Um, <clears throat> your whole thing of, you know, people criticize Raw because they think Vince stifles smaller guys and Vince stifles guys on Raw. But then you look at the guys on SmackDown. They're the smaller guys, the guys that can wrestle. Who has the final say on both Raw and SmackDown? Vince. When you complain that Vince ruins Raw, but but he, you know, SmackDown's so much better. It's it's not Vince is ruining Raw. It's your the guys you like better are on SmackDown. Cuz in the, in the end, it's Vince's final say for both shows. I get that, but I you know, yes that's true, but I wonder how true that is, you know? What do you mean? Like, we, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know if, if Vince is like, hey, uh, Triple H, let me get your feedback on this. Well, he's going you to never know. Triple H's feedback. We know that. I mean, that's almost a given. Right. But it, it, it's not like Vince is literally like, hey, Triple H, let me get your feedback on this. I don't think this would be good. Oh, cool. I don't give a fuck. We're doing it anyway. I, 
with Brian being the champion, I want to know what Vince thought. Let's make this guy champion right now. Because maybe he thought, hey, the yes movement from a while ago is huge. And the, yes the idea of dead. Exactly. I was just about to say that. The idea of killing the yes movement, having Brian saying it's dead. Whose idea was that? I thought it was super popular. So it's, I don't know. I think, yes, I mean, Vince does have the final say, but how much of the final say does Vince? Triple you know? H did say one time that he he was like, he did an interview. It was one of the conference calls, and somebody asked him about recent call-ups. This was in 2017. And he did say that he thought Samoa Joe would have favored better if he would have went to SmackDown. That's where he would have put him. Mm-hmm. So in the end, it is Vince's call because Vince ended up putting him on Raw. Like you said, the bigger guys go to Raw. I mean, no, no, no. Yeah, because initially Joe was on Raw. Yeah, initially he was on Raw. Because yeah. didn't he come back the same night Nia came back as well? When he came back, like debuted on the Returned. main roster? No, no, no. Return from injury. Oh, I don't remember that. It was literally like the same. Like as she was leaving, he was coming. Hmm. I don't remember um, that, but... I don't. I don't think WWE has killed Joe yet. As as no, super not at all. Like, I don't think he's killed him at all because I think that dude. All you gotta do is just have him choke someone out again. I'm telling you, this Brian and Joe feud's gonna be money, 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 money. Wait a minute! Oh my goodness! I just realized. What? Miz still has a number one contendership opportunity from beating Brian. Oh, he hasn't used it yet, has he? Has. Unless they're just pretending it's not true anymore. He I don't I want here's my thing. I want to know did they forget about it or are they trying to get us to forget about it? I they might be trying to get us to forget it. Jokes on you, WB, I never forget. I that just dawned on me. That just dawned on me that he has that opportunity. Uh Rumble if happening. Rumbler Mania. I say Joe and 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 Brian at Rumble. So you're saying a, sm- a raw guy wins the Rumble then? Yeah, yeah, probably a raw guy. Didn't Orton win it last year? No. No, 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 no. Who won it last year? Don't tell me, don't tell me, don't tell me. Asuka won the women's one. Uh-huh. The men's one. Give me a hint. Asuka's your hint. Asuka's my hint? <gasps> Shinsuke. Yes, sir. Sh- Shinsuke won the Rumble. Yep. I don't think it should be a triple threat. As I see no. some people suggesting in chat. 